Hello dear farmers and to everyone watching this episode, welcome back to your favorite farming channel, Farming with the CEO, where we say farming is the way to go. And today I had a chance to visit Acacia bird breeders, where they deal with livestock breeding. And if you need breeds such as the boas, the famous dopper sheep, the red kalhari, you can contact them on this number below that I post down on the screen. Remember, quality matters. And remember, they say breeding for generation. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about daily farming. And Peter, the resident vet, also the farm manager, will be taking us through today's episode. Remember, farming is the way to go. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to click on the subscription button below. And also remember to tell a friend to tell a friend, a farmer to tell a farmer. Let's grow this community together. So, hello, my name is Peter Dungo. I'm the manager of livestock and farm operations at Kishabia's livestock leaders. So, here we breed uh, jerseys, as you can see, but also several other breeds of uh, shapes. How long have you been involved in dairy farming? Uh, dairy farming is a uh, been doing it for about uh, two and a half years now. What number of animals do you have in your farm? Uh, so far we have uh, 13 animals that are being milked and we also have about uh, seven calves. And what about the production of milk? Uh, the production varies depending on the animal but uh, the range is between a minimum of 14 and a maximum of 22. I see the major breed that you have in your farm is Jersey animals. Yes. Why did you choose Jersey? Uh, as you can see, this area is quite uh, dry and uh, the climatic conditions are quite harsh. So for Jersey one, uh, it's a hardy animal. It's uh, able to utilize any type, of, any type of feed and also utilize it in its body. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the other thing, it feeds on very little feeds. As you can see from the chart I have created there for the workers to use, it feeds the maximum amount of feed. The highest cow is feeding at uh, 14 kgs and the cow is about uh, 460 kilograms. You mentioned about milk production. What the highest milk production you have been able to produce in the farm? Um, the highest uh, so far, I think we, sometimes we produce 24, but an average of 22. The highest animal that the, the animal that is producing the highest milk. Yes. What about the total? The total. Uh, we are currently selling uh, around 140 per day. 140 so, liters per day. Yes, but uh, I need to say that some cows are in calf, so they are in different stages of production. Some are going to dry. Others uh, are, are in early gestation, and also others are not being milked. So what? currently we are milking about uh, 10 animals. 10 animals. Yes, but in different stages of gestation. So, specifically, do you breed for, because I know there are some farmers who breed, they keep animals for milk. Yes. There are some keep them for, like, cars or generational breeding. What is the main purpose of keeping jersey farms in the farm? Uh, we have a strategic plan. Our aim is to have at least 50 jerseys in future. And uh, for basically purposes of milk production. But uh, needless to say, one, uh, once you get 50 and you still get more parts, at some point you have to sell. True. Yeah. What are some of the daily practices that you carry out in your farm? Maybe a day as a farmer. Uh, our day starts quite early. As you can see, this unit is managed by one person. And uh, I have to say, he does it uh, quite well. Uh, we start uh, milking around uh, 2 a.m. 2 a.m., that is when we milk. It takes uh, about an hour to milk all these cows. Uh, then immediately we feed them. Uh, from the chart there, if the maximum is feeding 14 kgs per day, so we have to divide that feed. So in the morning they get 7, 
And in the afternoon, they get another seven. But during the day, the concentrates also we distribute. Uh, so the day starts at 2 a.m. Milk for one hour. We feed them for about one and a half hours. From there, they go and sleep. Then after that, another eight hours from 2 a.m. That's around 8 a.m. Milk again for the second time without feeding now. Then they rest again until 3 p.m. We milk them again. Yeah. After milking, we feed them for the second time and uh, that's done. The milk we feed them, we go and rest. Till a bit, the next day, it, uh, 2 a.m. Let's talk about feeding. Huh? Yes. Because as a farmer producing 140 liters yes. per day, it is a lot of milk. How is your feeding program? What do you feed your animals? Uh, feeding, feeding, I would say it's, uh, it depends uh, mostly with the production stage. The first, the, the, the first, the factors you have to consider when feeding, one is the, the, the weight of the animal. After considering the weight, you have to consider the stage of production. Is it pregnant? The milk it is producing and so forth. So you have to, to measure the weight. Here I use the the, the weight I take for measuring the weight. I do it every two weeks. Every two weeks I do that. And uh, after two weeks, calculating the weight of the animal, we say normally a dairy cow should feed about uh, three percent of its body weight. And uh, of that three percent. 75% of that should be energy. And uh, for us here, we use uh, quality silage. We use uh, baby corn. That is what we use to make silage. So 75% of the feeds we give the animal is silage. Then 20% comes from uh, the protein. I show you that is the sun and also the sweet potato vines. The other around five percent is uh, the fiber that is good quality hay, and also some minerals that is uh, the salts and also the concentrates which is uh, dairy meal that is what we use. And uh, for dairy meal, uh, normally we say that uh, a normal cow, without uh, getting any dairy meal, should produce uh, around uh, seven kgs of milk. Without normal feeding. No daily meal should produce uh, 7 kgs. So, any extra amount of meal produced by that cow, there is a formula that I use to calculate the amount of uh, daily meal that should be fed to each cow, depending on the meal produced per cow. Yes. I'm talking about having a bigger number of animals. Yes. How do you ensure that every time they are heavy, no outbreak of diseases, things like that? Uh, I normally say uh, a, a cow is just like a human being and uh, the, the better you take care of yourself, the less I you visit the hospitals. So you feed this cow properly, the housing is okay and uh, you follow the vaccination regime that is required for them and you will not have any problems. Yes, so I make sure you can see the structure is okay. These cows are out of stress. As you know, stress reduces the immunity, whether it's a human being or an animal. Once you are stressed, your immunity goes down. So you have to make sure the cows are quite comfortable. And uh, once you do that, by the housing, the sleeping area, you have mattresses. And uh, also you do follow the vaccination, you feed them well. You don't have challenges. Yes. I've visited several farms, eh? yes. and I find them maybe about the comfortability of the animal. Yeah. They use sawdust on the cub sleeping cubicles. Yes. Why have you decided to use cow mattresses? Uh, cow mattresses are easy to wash and also disinfect. That area where they are sleeping. Uh, sawdust might be warmer, but uh, might be quite unhygienic, especially in the spread of mastitis. If it gets what it wet, it can be dangerous in case you have a piece of mastitis. 
yeah, it will spread quite fast. But for this one, you wash, you disinfect, you are good. Yes. After milk production, yeah. you can't stay with your milk at home. So, you must sell it to to yes. to either to find a market. Where is your market? Do you do self marketing or? Uh, currently, we are relying on a local dairy. We just sell it uh, around. But uh, as I have told you, we have a strategic plan of increasing our animals. And uh, in that case, I can assure you we'll be marketing uh, the milk by ourselves directly to the, to the companies or also or even do value addition and uh, sell our product. Yes. What are some of the challenges that you are experiencing in your farm? Or the challenge that has happened before and you... And how did you find a solution towards it, towards the challenge? Uh, one of the challenges is uh, actually the, the cost of feeds. Uh, the dairy meal we are using, of course, it is commercially sourced, which is uh, quite expensive. And uh, there is no guarantee that it is going to come down anytime soon. So maybe our, our plan is to increase on the on the protein levels that we are feeding our animals so that uh, maybe we can reduce on the on the daily meat. But uh, it's quite a challenge on the on the feeds, commercial feeds. The, the other challenge is uh, drought. Uh, this area gets really dry and therefore getting getting feeds without water becomes very difficult. But uh, we have done a warhol and uh, quite done also quite some fodder. So we are planning going forward, uh, the, the fodder may not be a big challenge uh, compared to the commercial feeds. Yeah. So the, the, the challenges might be minimal because uh, as I have told you, these cows are quite hardy. Mm. Even by checking on their legs, they don't look like the flesh and ones. These legs look like uh, for those sheep uh, found in uh, marsh areas. They are called the long marsh. They those sheep which live in uh, in uh, what do we call these things? In water water areas. Yeah, the cold areas. Yes, the cold areas. So this this animal, when you when you take good care of it, you get uh, minimal challenges. Yes. Do you how do you manage your waste? From animal because I know maybe sometimes some farmers may they say manure. How do you manage your waste? Uh, some of the waste uh, we use it uh, as manure. Actually, all of it, not some. You can see if going through the farm, I'll show you where by we mix it with water and they use it to to water the, the, the Lusan area. And also, the other one we collect it as dry and also use it in our farms as manure compost manure. Where do you see the future of dairy farming? The future of dairy farming. Uh, the future of dairy farming going into future. Dairy, actually let me say agriculture and more dairy farming will be the backbone of this economy. Because you go all over, you will find the, 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 the milk being produced in this country. Is, is not enough. It's not enough and it will never be enough. Going by what is happening with the weather, most most people have given up. Going by the cost of the feeds, most people have given up. So, in case you, you are planning to do the farming, you better focus on it. Yes. What that advice that you can give you, you can give to that aspiring farmer? Or uh, a farmer who is still doing farming and wants to give up on farming, saying that farming is not profitable. Don't give up. Farming is the way to go. Agriculture is the way. Don't give up. That's just that. Yes. Nothing else. Yes. Stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> what about a farmer who wants to visit your farm? Huh? Yeah. Do you offer training? Uh, yes, we offer some training, but uh, one have to book an appointment. Italia, uh, so that we plan and also due to the security measures we don't allow most customers most 
people in our farms. Yes, because you, as you know, most diseases are brought by people coming into our farms. Yes. But they must first of all book an appointment so that, yes, it, so that how, we have a prior planning. And how can they reach to you? Uh, there's this other, as we finish, eh? yeah. what's that advice that you can give to that young person, that youth somewhere, yeah. who is saying that there's no unemployment outside there? What's that one motive word that you can give to them? Uh, and encourage them about maybe agriculture? I would encourage uh, the young generation Let's not just focus on white collar jobs. You have uh, you have your degree. You say you can't come and uh, stay with your cows. My friend, my brother, my sister, you are lost. I also did my degree in a different field. I went back to school to do animal health just because I saw the future of this nation is agriculture. And I can tell you for a fact, I've never regretted making that decision. So I would advise uh, those young people, despite me being young, because I'm not I'm about to be a past youth, but I'm still a youth. I would advise them, let's focus, let's stay focused and uh, look at the direction of where the country is going. And I can tell you, going forward, agriculture will be the key thing in this country. Yes. Thank you for watching today's episode. Make sure that you click on the subscription button below. We are on a journey towards 10,000 subscribers. And to those who have already subscribed to my YouTube channel, thank you so much. You are the people who are making us to conquer. Remember to tune in in the next episode. Remember, farming is the way. Ukulima, see